Hello, and welcome to the second part of my Dutch Defence Guide. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Staunton Gambit. More specifically, I'm going to be teaching you how to beat it. Let's go. So, the Staunton Gambit, as I'm sure most of you will know, begins after d4, f5, and e4. Now, White's idea is to exploit the fact that Black has weakened certain diagonals around his king, and try to develop his pieces as quickly as possible. Now, you pretty much have to take this on e4, the only other alternative maybe is to play d6, but here after knight c3 you just kind of look silly because you have no particularly good options, you don't want to take this and just allow white to develop. And trust me, it's just a mess. So let's go back to f takes e4. Here white will play the move knight to c3, and you will play the move knight to f6, just defending your pawn and making it difficult for, black, for white to win this back. Um, white will normally play the move bishop to g5, but let's quickly talk about the alternative f3. Now, you don't want to take this, right? Because even though you are uh, cementing your advantage of being up a pawn, white is now so much better developed with more uh, central control as well, and you're just not going to be having a very fun game. I can guarantee you that. You're just going to be on the back foot and trying to save yourself over and over again, and it's not going to end well. So what should you play? Well, you should definitely be playing the move d5 in this position. Because you're not taking here, but you're not making it easy for white to win his pawn back either. So after an exchange on e4, white will normally play the move bishop g5. Now the idea here is that they want to take and take and remove the guard of the pawn on e4, at which point they will just take on e4. Uh, you're not going to allow this, so you're going to protect the pawn with bishop f5. Um, now here, say bishop to c4. Something like knight c6, knight e2, and now e6, blocking the diagonal. And black's really doing quite well here, because he is up a pawn still, right? White hasn't been able to win that back. And he's just going to be able to say castle queenside, next move. Uh, maybe play something like knight a5 to get rid of the light squared bishop. And yeah, black's doing fine. So, f3, uh, just make sure you don't take this, and you should be doing okay, as long as you play d5. So let's go back to bishop g5. As I mentioned before, this move has the idea of taking, taking, and then taking on e4. So, uh, you don't want to allow that, so you play the move c6. What? How does that prevent take this, you may ask? Well, it doesn't, but it does strongly deter it. Um, the point is, if white does play this and celebrate because they've regained their pawn, uh, you just play d5, and now all of a sudden, sure, white has regained their pawn, but they've also lost all of their initiative, and this position is actually quite a bit better for black. Because he has uh, a stronger, more fortified center, and uh, all of a sudden, he can develop quickly and easily. And if white tries to do some kind of crazy, all-out, kamikaze attack, uh, you just play queen e8, and you shut all of that down, and here, white's pieces look very stupid. The knight on g3 is lost. This guy is pinned and he wants to come to g3, but his friend is, like, I don't know, still there for some reason. And black, white's pieces just lack coordination. Um, black has, as I said, better central control and will be able to develop pretty easily and have a slight advantage, actually. So... White doesn't want to take on f6 here, so instead, after c6, he plays the move f3. Uh, kind of similar to before, you don't want to take this and allow white to take back with the knight, or perhaps even with the queen in this case. Uh, so, in this position, you play the move queen a5. Now, this is quite a clever move, uh, quite a creative move, because it attacks the bishop on g5, and it also pins the knight. Uh, and the reason you want to pin the knight is that if they ever take on e4, you take back with your knight, and they can't recapture you because that's not uh, part of the rules of chess as of the time of recording. So they have three main options. The first is bishop to d2. Now after bishop d2 you play the move queen b6 and you attack both the b2 pawn and d4 pawn. Say f takes e4, queen takes d4, knight f3 and queen b6. Back again and here as I said, uh, well as I didn't say actually, but as I was going to say, black is doing fine. Um, you do have some pressure against white's pawns, and of course, you're still up a pawn, which, um, which is kind of 
uh, the justification for your lack of development compared to white. Uh, so, bishop d2 is not that bad if you do know what you're doing. Uh, how about bishop takes f6? Well, basically in all of the lines uh, in this variation, taking early on f6 is not one of white's best options. Here again, say after uh, bishop takes f6, e takes f6, and f takes e4, black uh, can play bishop to b4, and again, it's all of a sudden black who is building up some pressure. Uh, say something like knight e2, d5, a3, bishop back, knight g3, and castles. All of a sudden, black has some decent uh, pressure on the e-file coming, uh, and easy development of, of his pieces, and strong foothold in the center. So again, white doesn't really want to play the move bishop takes f6 at any point in this line. How about e5? Um, sorry, how about queen d2, which will be met with the move e5? Um, so, queen to d2 is white's uh, probably best move on move 6. Now, the point of this is you're unpinning uh, your knight, and you're also protecting the bishop. So here, uh, as I may have spoiled, black plays the move e5. Um, the point of this is you're striking in the center, and you're also threatening to take on d4. Now, you uh, if you take on d4, queen takes, and... Uh, this would leave the bishop on g5 hanging. So, obviously, white does not want to allow this. So he has two options here. Number one is to uh, take on e5. Here we see queen takes e5, threatening a discovery. So let's say that white plays long castles. Well, here black simply plays bishop b4, and again, black all of a sudden gets quite a lot of pressure. Uh, say bishop takes, takes, uh, f takes, and after a big liquidation, um, white's pawn structure is pretty much one of the uglier pawn structures I have seen in a while. Um, so white probably doesn't want to go for this variation, and if instead of, say, castle's queenside, he plays bishop takes f6 now, um, it's much the same story. White's pawn structure is going to get ruined either way. So... Uh, taking on e5 is not very desirable, so white will most likely opt for bishop takes f6. And here, he, he kind of gives black a taste of his own medicine, and uh, black's pawn structure looks a bit messy. Um, here, after g takes, g takes f6, we see f takes e4, and e takes d4, and queen takes d4. And here, black has three main options. They are all queen moves, and they are queen c5, queen e5, and queen to g5. Uh, I recommend the move queen to g5 as I think it's most interesting, and objectively according to engines, who are, are probably going to be our mechanical overlords in five years, so I might as well make them happy while I'm at it. Uh, they also agree that queen g5 is probably best. Now, um, sorry. Now, the point of queen g5 is pretty much whatever move they play next, you will play the move bishop to c5. I mean, if they play knight f3 attacking your queen, you will play the move bishop to c5. Because even if they take, you take, and here, again, you can ruin white's pawn structure, and sure, f6 is a weakness, but these are even weaker, probably. And uh, black's probably, if anything, slightly better here, in my opinion, and again, in the opinion of our mechanical overlords. Um, so... Black, sorry, after knight f3, uh, white does not want to take the queen um, after bishop c5, and probably wants to play something like queen to d3. Now here, black has two main options. If you are a big fan of boring endgames, I will willingly invite you to play this move, but I don't think there are very many people who are fans of boring endgames, so instead, I'm going to be recommending the move queen to h6, and I think this move leads to some very cool positions, because your bishop and your queen team up very well to control these dark squares around white's king, and you'll notice that they both cover the castling squares and make it impossible for white to get his king safe. Um, and uh, this is actually kind of a problem, so say something like rook d1, um, rook to g8, g3, um, Sorry, I should mention, 
So here again, you're preventing white from getting organized. He can never develop his bishop, or else g2 will be hanging. So he plays g3. G, I said he plays g3. And now knight a6, uh, for instance. And you're just jumping in the position, coming with knight b4. And helpfully enough, the engine has decided to give, in such a fascinating position as this, the engine has decided to come up with an evaluation of 0, 0.00. Make of that what you will. Um, but to me, this is just a fantastically interesting position. Um, and I'd honestly be, I I'd honestly enjoy playing this with either side. Um, but with that, um, that is how to beat, or at least get a very interesting game against the Staunton Gambit. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And probably more importantly than you enjoying it, I hope you helped it. I hope it helped your opening repertoire. Um, if you're like one of the 5% of people who actually watched the whole video, um, and didn't skip to the end, I guess, uh, please do consider liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing it, and also, I don't know, reacting to it with your cat in the background doing something nice. I don't, I, I don't know. Goodbye.